I don't normally cover mobile apps on this channel because for the most part, a lot of them are pretty boring. But today what we're looking at is a mobile app for GitHub known as DioHub. Now, if you didn't know, there actually is an official mobile app for GitHub. I don't know how good it is. I haven't used it. I heard sort of like mixed things here and there, but for the most part, I've heard it does pretty much everything you want from GitHub. There's one problem with it though. GitHub didn't open source it. You are literally a source code hosting platform that didn't open source your app. So instead of looking at that, we'll be looking at this third party app, which even though it says it's early access, alpha software, whatever you want to call it, it's really, really good. And I don't know where it's alpha. Like there's a couple of little things that I think might need a bit of work, but overall, there is no reason why you can't be using this app right now. Probably the biggest issue it has is there is a lot of wasted space. Like up the top here, this is nothing. There's a gap here, a gap here, a gap here. Like all of these gaps are fine, but the gaps should be considerably smaller. And if we scroll down just a bit, it actually hides that search bar, but you can clearly see there is enough space like right here to still include it. So there's no reason to actually be really doing that. This is how it should look by default, but with the search bar actually here, and you can actually see way more elements on the screen. Whenever you open up the app, the first thing you're going to see is your activity feed, which works basically the same way it does over on the GitHub website. So if someone goes and like forks your repo, or they go and star it, or someone you're following goes and makes a repo or forks it, or stuff like that, Basically that sort of stuff that makes GitHub sort of like a social media platform with Git repos on it is all going to be listed here. Now, there is something weird about actually clicking on information on this page. Now, you might think that if you click on the person's name, I actually will do it with my mouse so you can see it. If you click on the person's name, that would go to their profile. In its current state, only clicking on the profile picture is actually going to do that. And same with actually going to the repo. Clicking on the repo name isn't actually going to go to the repo. Only clicking on this section in here is going to do that. I think both clicking on the name and clicking on the element should go to the page. Now, as for the repo itself, it's going to show you all of the relevant information you're going to care about. So you've got the name, you've got the about section. If it was forked from something, it'll tell you where it was forked from. It's got the license and some little stats about the... Uh, the repo itself. So like how many issues it has, how many forks it has, how many people are watching it. Let's actually go to the base repo because I know this one actually has some issues and pull requests on it. There's also a branch select. So if you have extra branches on your repo, you can go and swap between those. In my case though, I only have a master branch. Now as for the readme, this works basically as you would expect it to. This readme document is in Markdown. It's going to render Markdown as Markdown probably should be rendered. Really nothing out of the ordinary here. I haven't noticed any readmes that don't get rendered properly. Now, as for the code section, while you can't do everything you can do on the GitHub web app, we can still go and do things like actually examine the code. Now, in some cases here, you won't actually see... Uh, syntax highlighting. So let's say this script right here. Now that's because I think the way it does syntax highlighting is based on the extension. So if the file doesn't have an extension, it probably won't actually do the highlighting. But this one right here, that one is being highlighted like bash code probably should be. Same with this lure example as well. This is being highlighted as it probably should be. Now, if we go and rotate the phone to the side, it is actually going to properly rotate the app and from what I've seen, most of the app actually does work properly in this rotated state. But when you do have it in a vertical mode here, you still can go and read the code by clicking this button in the top right hand corner. And that is going to go on word wrap based on the width of your screen. If you don't want to word wrap though, you can go and just, you know, scroll left and right. It is just going to be a little bit less convenient. Now, when it comes to issues, they work basically perfectly. Maybe you can change some minor things like the way it's being filtered. Maybe don't show the closed issues by default. Don't show this end of the line thing at the bottom. Things like that can be changed, but the actual usability is exactly where it should be. So let's go to an issue already open, like this one at the top. We can go and close the issue. We can go and edit the assignees. In my case, I'm the only one working on this repo. We can go and add labels to it. We can go and, you know, 
see a description if there actually is a description. In this case, there is. We go to discussion. We can actually add comments to this. Basically, everything you need for looking at existing issues is already there. And we can actually make a new issue. And then once you've made the issue, you can basically repeat the cycle again. If your repo has a lot of issues, you can go and search for an issue. But if you'd rather just do something like filter and sort, that is an option as well. And there is a lot that you can sort by. Like, almost an excessive amount of things. Like, if you want to sort by the number of reactions, like, that's something you can do as well. I don't know when you would ever do that, but it is an option there. And if you just want to see things that are open, you can go and enable that as well. That probably should be the default fault state, but it's not a big deal. As for pull requests, they're basically in a usable state, but there's a couple of little things that do need to be worked on. So going into an existing pull request, we can go and see things like, you know, what's actually being merged, people are assigned to it, labels, all that sort of stuff, description, same as the issue. We have a discussion here, the discussion works just as well. We can normally see the commits, but I've noticed that for some pull requests, the commits aren't loading, even though we can see that some files actually were changed. Clicking on this box will actually let us see those changes. As you can see, works the same way as viewing code from before. Now, as I said, some things actually do show the changes. So this one does have the commits in here. We can go and examine those commits. I don't know why it's not always showing it. Going into the commit details will show us general information about the commit, like the commit message, who it was made by, when it was committed, how many files were changed. Under the changed files, we have the exact same thing we saw before from the pull request, and we can go and examine changes in here as well. It works pretty much as you would expect it to. I feel like it's fairly well designed. There's like a couple of things here and there which should be worked on, but for the most part, it overall feels pretty good. The main things you can't do are make a pull request and merge a pull request. I probably wouldn't want to do that from mobile anyway. It's good enough that we can go and make an issue and actually report bugs directly from our phone. I, I would like the option there to have pull requests, but it's not a major deal. Now, under the more section, there is going to be the option to open up the wiki. In this case, there isn't actually a wiki, but if there was, it would just basically open up an embedded web browser as we can see for a project like LF. It does what the wiki should be doing, but like, it's it's nothing special for the app. That's pretty much it for the state of the repos, which I feel like are in a pretty good state. Now, on the homepage, there are a couple of the tabs that I didn't talk about. So there's also the issues tab here. This is basically the issues that you have recently made. You've got pull requests, same thing, ones that you've recently made. You've got the organizations you're in and the activity that they've actually been doing. You've got the public activity, and this is basically what everyone else is doing. When I say that GitHub is basically a social media platform, this is what I mean. You may have also noticed the tabs along the bottom, and the first one after home makes this search bar completely redundant, and probably means that it shouldn't actually be there, especially when it only appears at the top. So clicking on that is going to bring up the search GitHub option. Works basically as you'd expect it to. Let's go to the Do Hub repo and let's see what we actually find. There it is, Do Hub. Click on that. And that brings up the repo. GitHub also has a notification system that can be viewed by clicking on the little bell icon works basically as you'd expect it to. And then the next one, that is gonna show you your personal profile. Now, there's not really anything that exciting to say about this. The about section has what you'd expect it to have. The overview has your pinned repos, along with the contribution graph you've had. I know mine is uh, very bare. One problem with the contribution graph is there's no way to like zoom in on this. So it's can be kind of hard to see, but ultimately that information isn't that important. Now under the repository section, that is gonna show you the rest of your repos, including your private repos. I've actually got a lot of stuff in here, even like early uni assignments. Uh, I can imagine how bad that code is. Maybe I should look at that code on stream at some point. Then under the activity section, it lists out the stuff that you've recently been doing. And all of this stuff also applies to looking at other people's profiles as well. And then the last tab we have is the settings tab. At least I think it's the last tab because it actually goes halfway off the screen. I have a feeling this wasn't tested on the same resolution as my device. 
That's the only way I can think of that actually happening. Now, this gives you access to application theming. So let's go and change the accent color. This gives you access to a full RGB selector. Let's go and make this uh, red, for example. So as we can see, this has now gone red. And if we go back into the profile, these boxes are red up here. And also under the contribution graph, that is also red as well. And it will use slightly different shades of red based on like how many commits you actually made that day. It doesn't give you full access to those colors. That would be cool to see though. A problem this theming has is it doesn't hook into the Android theming system. So you could have a global dark theme set and still have a light theme enabled in the application. By default, it is a dark theme, so that is nice. But I would like the option to use either the app theme or use my global theme. I can't imagine it's that difficult. I, I don't know, I haven't done Android app development, but having the option there would be really nice. Now that's pretty much it for the app itself. If you would like to install it, Currently, it is not available on F-Droid. So if you want to install it, you'll have to get it from the Google Play Store. Or your other option is to go and download the APK file from the GitHub and then just manually load it yourself. If you don't like the Play Store, that's your best option. The dev is planning to get this on F-Droid though, so expect that to happen at some point in the future. I personally don't like to work with code or social media on my phone, but I totally get why some people like that. Personally, I do it on my computer, but if you do like to do that work on your phone and managing GitHub is something you need to do, Dio Hub is absolutely worth looking at, especially if you don't want to use the first party app. That'll be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe site and Libera Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. <laughs>